information that can revolutionize your healing journey, can help you end the cycles of abuse, help you find the root cause of what is plaguing you and patterns that are playing out in your life. Because oftentimes we don't even know what we don't know until we know it. So if you don't know me, my name is Dr. Lisha Antica. I'm a transpersonal therapist studying consciousness and trauma and ending cycles of abuse is truly my mission. And this information, the seven of seen mirrors, I gleaned from Greg Braden, a wonderful teacher of mine, somebody who I admire and follow. And he actually gleaned it from his own teacher. So this is really old information that comes from the practice of the Essenes, which was a mystical and educational elite group of Jewish teachers and healers that actually they've been told that Jesus Christ was an Essene. So this wisdom of how the universe works, how the matrix works, how we work as human beings to end cycles, to end karma, and to live our best lives from this place of authority and joy and peace is um, has been around for a long time. So this is no new information, but it is great information that I hope you absolutely love. So there are seven mirrors, but I'm going to talk about a mirror first and foremost. So you might have heard the phrase or the saying, an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth, you reap what you sow, all of that stuff, right? And for a lot of people, they said, well, if it happens to you, if you like or dislike that about somebody else, it must mean that about you. This is one mirror, which we'll get into, but that is pretty much the extent of what mainstream society speaks on when they talk about these mirrors. And it's not always us. It's not always a direct reflection of us. Now, if you're into reality creation or the law of attraction, then you might have heard that we live in a holographic universe. In sacred geometry, we also live in a holographic universe. And everything is mirrored around us. And so we have this hologram of the, the seven sides of reality, the seven chakras, the, the seven layers of consciousness, the seven ladders of ascension. There's tons of sevens. And so looking at your life from this place of where is this lesson? Where's this pattern? Where is this awareness coming from? And not being one-sided or single dimension is, is going to set you free to create a life that you truly desire and heal not only from your own traumas and dramas, but help other people and have conflict re resolution and just understand your reality a little bit better so you can pull up the roots of any old drama and trauma and pattern and pain in your life heal it from the inside out and create a new reality for yourself. So if that sounds good, you are in the right place. Thank you for joining me for this masterclass. It is an honor to be here. And if you'd like to know more about working with me personally, my other masterclasses and free events and programs, trainings, and all of the stuff that I do, check me out at lishaantica.com, L-I-S-H-A-A-N-T-I-Q-U-A.com. You can schedule a consultation with me there, look at my programs, and um, sign up for my free newsletter where I will send you when I'm doing these next masterclasses. So you can come and join us. So let's dive right in. The first is seen mirror is that which I am in the moment, that which I am in the moment. So this can look a couple different ways. So maybe you feel triggered by somebody coming into your life that resembles something that you don't like about yourself. This is something that we have a lot. Maybe you are a little chubby or a little unhealthy. And so then when you see people that resemble that, you judge them or you get triggered by them, that is like in this moment. Another way to look at this I really like is 
say that somebody that you like or you yourself decide that you really want a certain car, say that you want a purple car and all of a sudden there was like no purple cars and it was like this unique idea in your head. You get the idea that you want a purple car and then boom, there's purple cars everywhere. That is how reality comes to us in the moment. This is a beautiful mirror because when we take responsibility for when somebody's bothering us or triggering us and we can look at that and be like, oh, well, their attitude is upsetting me because I have the same attitude and I don't like that about myself. Or they're not taking care of themselves and I'm judging them, but but I'm not taking care of myself like that. Then we can claim power over this mirror and and change how we're thinking and how we're relating in the moment. The second Essene mirror. So the second Essene mirror is what you judge in the moment. So say that you have a judgment on cleanliness, right? And you want them everything clean and you are a really clean person. You're a really clean person. However, you keep running into all these people that are triggering the trauma response and they're just dirty. They don't respect their space and you super annoying about it. And you can't seem to get away from, you know, the, the dirt over here, the dirt over there. Right. So, so you're judging it in order to shift. This is about healing that judgment within yourself. So it's not so dogmatic. You don't have to have everything just so in order to have your peace and then you can accept other people. And really what tends to happen is your, your perception will shift and people that have whatever you're judging won't come around you as often. Um, another way that this judgment can come up is when you judge yourself, like maybe you say, oh, like all men cheat. And so you have this judgment that all men cheat and then you attract men that cheat or all women are drama queens. And so you have this judgment that all women are drama queens and you keep attracting women that are drama queens or that everybody's poor. There's not enough money. The economy is messed up. You have that judgment on the world. And so then you don't get those opportunities, right? You see other people making money. You see other people doing this. It seems almost unfair. That's because of this original judgment. So when you look at your life and you're like, well, I'm not that way, but this pattern keeps coming to me. The next mirror to look at is, is this a judgment? Is this something I judge harshly that I have a judgment about? Am I assuming something about these people, places, or things that this involves? And if so, clean that up, find your judgment, heal that within yourself, and you'll get to see more of what you want rather than what you don't want. The third Essene mirror is, what is it that I see in this person that I've given away, lost, or was taken from me? So this is a trigger that happens when we're grasping for things. So this happens with love often. So if you didn't get love as a child, then you might grasp for love. So the mirror that you might see is I'm unlovable and you're grasping because you lost that love, if that makes sense. This person is reflecting back to you, mirroring what you've missed, what you've given up or what was taken from you. So another thing that can happen is you can ask yourself, well, did I lose that thing? Did I lose that love? Did I lose that opportunity? Did I lose that scholarship? Did I, was it taken from me? So many, many, many people seek in, in my profession, when I'm working with people, I work with a lot of survivors of, of abuse, of childhood abuse. So they feel their childhood was taken from them, which means that things that we don't really do as children, we don't have to make much decisions. We don't have to be responsible for our money and our finances. And we're kind of waiting for other people to tell us what to do and how to do it. That's 
the beauty in a safe environment of having a safe childhood. But if you didn't get a childhood, a lot of people grow up and they've lost that innocence. It was taken from them. They lost that time of play and joy. It was taken from them. Therefore, they find it very challenging to get a really great paying job and, and make money on their own and trust themselves in making choices. But when you heal that relationship of grief that when your childhood was taken away from you, you are going to then understand that a little bit better, heal it more, and then you can reclaim what was taken from you. You can go and get what was lost. And you're not forced into that giving away or replacing something. This is also how we have rebound relationships. And it's so really asking like, where's this pattern coming from? What was lost? What was given away? So if it wasn't a mirror in the moment, say that you want more money, more abundance, and you have plenty of money in the moment, but everybody around you doesn't seem to have any money. That wouldn't be you in that moment. And you don't believe that the economy is going to poo or or anything like that. Like you're not buying into that, but you still don't understand why like nobody around you has money, right? And so you're looking at that and going, well, I don't have any judgments here. That feels pretty clear. And you can say, well, what was lost taken away? And you might have a memory like, oh, well, when I was a kid, my mom and dad used to, you know, never have enough money. So they borrowed money for me for my first job and they took my gas money or they took my college money and they took my funds, right? They took things away from you or you had, we were forced to give it away. You had to give all your money to your spouse or to your brothers or sisters or to your parents. Um, or you had an experience where you lost it, right? Something like this happens and you're like, oh, that's where the scarcity, that's where the scarcity comes from. You heal that relationship with whatever that trauma and that drama was. And then all of a sudden you'll feel and see that shift around you. That mirror doesn't have to be within your soul essence anymore. And you'll be able to, people will have the flow. The flow will happen again. The money will start coming back into you. You heal that relationship. Same relationship with love happens a lot. I see with clients and definitely that innocence of your childhood. So I hope that helps you heal your relationship with things that have been lost, stolen, or given away. So you don't have to re just repeat that pattern over and over again in the mirror within your soul. So the fourth a scene mirror is through seen through addiction or compulsion. So addiction can be anything that you're addicted to. It could be a thought. A thought of I'm not enough is one that plagues so much of the world, right? We're addicted to that thought, addicted to the sadness, addicted to the old stories. It can also be addicted to a substance, to money, to sex, to a person. We call that toxic bonds or um, you can be addicted to anything, really. It is when something outside of you has more power over you than you have over yourself. Now, the compulsion is pretty much the same as an addiction. It's just more sporadic. An addiction tends to go on and go on and go on. A compulsion might be, I'm going to go on this trip like right now, right? And you go and you spend all your money. It's more of rash decisions. It's more like going to and doing something that is not safe or secure for you to do and doing those things over and over again. So when you're trapped in this Essene mirror, you're feeling like you're kind of grasping for um, and what you hold dear. And what you hold dear is defining yourself more than you are defining yourself. So you might hold a drug dear, a person dear, your job dear, right? Especially if you're a workaholic, that is more of who you are, your identity is wrapped up in that compulsion, that character or that addiction. So looking at this is going to help you to understand why addiction seems so challenging 
because it's showing you places that you lost yourself. It's showing you what you value and what's important to you. Either you might be running away from what you value and what's important to you or running towards it. Either way, when we're dealing with this addiction and compulsion, it is it is running our life. You aren't, whether you're running towards it or away from it. Healing through the addiction, healing your relationship with yourself. And so your identity is no longer wrapped up in the behavior, the acts, the compulsion. And you don't lose yourself and your consciousness to that is going to help you to reclaim what you lost in that situation. So also heal the third mirror and stop judging yourself. Also heal that second mirror and stop being what you disrespect or being in a way that you don't um, don't desire isn't for your highest good when it comes to being controlled by that addiction or compulsion. So I hope that helps you in that, knowing that the addiction and compulsion itself is a mirror of how we perceive the outside world and how we create our own reality. The fifth mirror is the mirror of your parental connections. So the mom and dad mirror, when it comes to healing inner child work, when it comes to healing trauma, especially original childhood trauma, this is a super important mirror. Again, we run away from this mirror or we run towards this mirror. But if you keep having relationships with people like your mom or your dad, and it just keeps cycling over and over and over again with different person or, you know, same, same relationship, different, per like different body, different meat sack, then um, this is the mirror for you. So healing your relationship with your mom and your dad, with how you related to them as spiritual figures, as godly figures, as, as people, how you relate to their beliefs. Being able to think for yourself rather than taking everything that you learned in childhood at face value is going to be really important to end that cycle of just regurgitating the past. Now we have genetic makeups that have us do this. This one is pretty deep. It shows up in multiple facets of everybody's life, physically, mentally, emotionally, and etherically, meaning as that mirror comes in, as your magnetic field pulls in your parents' reality, we do tend to repeat cycles, economic cycles, healing cycles, genetic cycles, disease cycles, um, emotional and mental belief system cycles from our parents. And then we have the judgments and the conclusions So it really works in with the um, second mirror of judgment, as well as the first mirror of who I am is who I am. Now, all of these mirrors, remember, we can shift that holographic image. We can shift what we see and perceive it differently. So your parents also represent God and authority for the first time. So this is one that I talk a lot about in Amazing You. When we talk about the etheric zone and healing the inner child and becoming the authority in your own life, so you can co-create with God's source, whatever your relationship with that is, rather than be subject to whatever's happening in the world and all the worldly stuff, or be subject to genetic makeup or what your parents thought and, and that control. Realizing that your first relationship with authority, your good or bad, your th first relationship with power, your first relationship with love, your first relationship with yourself and all of your belief systems are really programmed by your parents or grandparents, whoever raised you and, um, and your genetic makeup. So looking at this, owning this, you know, and, and being able to shift this is really, really beautiful and absolutely possible for you as you heal and create your reality, your own relationship with creator, your own relationship with mother, father, God within you, and your own relationship with who you want to be rather than who you were programmed to be, what you learned, what belief systems, your relationship with yourself that you learned from mom and dad. This one is a huge one. This is a great mirror. 
And if you want to attract new relationships and not have the same experience with money or people or love or sex or environment or bosses or career or economic status, then your parents, this is one that you definitely want to dive into. Notice what's happening in your reality bubble. Notice what patterns are coming in for you and go, oh, I can heal that. That's a relationship with mom and dad. Oh, I can heal that. That's something I lost and gave away. Oh, I can get healed that. That's an addiction or a compulsion. Oh, I can heal that. That's something I'm judging right now. And it has more power over me than, than just love, right? Oh, I can heal that. That's something that is happening currently in my life that's ready to shift. Looking at life from this holistic perspective, like, reality is coming at you to help you heal and break free from the matrix, break free from the hologram to co-create your life and be your own authority um, and a new authority in this world, a new expression of a child of God is super powerful place to be. Number six, the sixth mirror is the dark night of the soul. So if you've gone through this, you probably had a divine awakening <laughs> everything in your life fell apart and fell to shit you've probably gone through a period of time where you felt alone where nobody was there where you were kind of sent out in the desert for 40 days and 40 nights to walk about and um this this is really typical. This is really normal. Now, when we fight this part of the mirror, when we fight this and we make it mean things about ourselves, when we, when we get out of balance with it, we can spend a lot more time fighting and, and living in this actual, this kind of hell on earth, I think this place. But when you realize it as, yeah, everything is falling apart and and everything is falling away from me. So you can then pick up the pieces and recreate your life the way that you want to. That you can recreate the mirrors that you want to put out into the world. You can you can take down all the mirrors and and just put up a beautiful love bubble and and create a life that you dream. This awakening is really about balance. We're balancing that energetic center right where the energy center the spiritual center our connection to god's source and that earthly center that first three dimensional center that place of manifesting of living on this planet of being human of, of diving into mother earth right and and this human journey the supply and the demand it's also balancing good and evil Okay, between ourselves, we all have shadows. This is where the shadow work really takes place. And you might see things that you need to work that are that can relate to the first five mirrors. And and you're like, oh, you're awakening to this balance to make choice. I find the dark night of the soul is the time to make choice. For me, I was outcast by the church, I was outcast by the yogis. I I was literally sent into isolation in the little town that I was in. And I spent about five years there because I made myself wrong. I, but I wrote books. I mean, I did a ton of stuff. It's actually really beautiful. I got a divorce, which was fantastic. I started shifting my relationship, the other five mirrors, doing the inner work. This is time. The dark night of the soul is your time for you because when you come out of it, you're going to shine. You're going to shine out that beautiful opening, that beautiful abundance of co-creating your reality with, with your highest timeline, with your highest soul, with your highest purpose, and stepping into your divine purpose, which brings us to the seventh Essene mirror. So the seventh Essene scene mirror is the mirror that the universe has your back. Everything is working out for the best. Your soul's not getting it wrong. Even if you come back to life a bazillion times, if you believe in past lives or future lives and, and do this over and over again, where you are in your walk is perfectly divine. You get to consciously bring into reality what you desire. 
that everything is working out to you because your beliefs matter, your judgments matter, that you get to choose what you love and what you like and what you spend your time in, what you spend your reality in. You get to spin, you get to spin your reality how you want to. You get to call into your reality and control this reality bubble, your magnetic field and who you spend time with and what you judge and your belief systems and and your relationship with authority and your what you give away and what was taken away and how you claim it back. And you get to heal these pieces of you. You get to accept them. You get to love them within you to the best of your ability. And we're always changing and prospering and moving and fix like finding different things and fixing things within ourselves. And I believe in it all in the end of at the end of the day, it is all working out for the best. It is all working out for the best. When you can know evil and recognize evil and go, that's evil and choose something new, you're no longer subject to evil, to the being blind to it or seeing it. When you're like, oh, that's good, that's lovely, that's beautiful, and you can appreciate it and you can love it, but you're no longer controlled by it. It no longer means that you're better than or some something else like that's beautiful. That's when you have this peace and harmony within you that all things happen for a reason that all things are working out for your best, that all things are in your best interest and you surrender into this trust. And that's really what happens no matter what's happening in the outside world. There's a deeper, deeper trust. And I think that for me personally, like Jesus is just a beautiful example of this as he just trusted, like even though the world was coming at him and all this stuff was happening. He trusted and and rose again. And that was really the lessons of the Essene. So I hope that this class, um, that you took notes, that you come back and listen again and again, that this is a beautiful bonus to Unstoppable Confidence or whatever program I'm bonusing this class for you um, in, and that you feel more like when things happen in your life, it's not you have to take responsibility for them all. You can find that root of whatever it is, whether it was your parents and that relationship or an addiction or a compulsion or something you lost and, and you get to heal that grieving process in yourself or, or a judgment that you have or something that you totally are. And, and you get to choose it and shift it and change it and start creating the reality that your heart desires and living in your milk and honey because all things are working out for you and for the best. So thank you so much for joining me. Feel free to reach out to me at lishaantica.com. Send me a message, schedule a consultation, join my she group or him groups. And um. I can't wait to talk to you soon.